What's up guys, Quizzy here, bringing you guys another tutorial. This time I'm going to be showing you how to do these lower third pop-ups for your videos. Uh, most of the time you use them to like say, hey, like the video, hey, subscribe, stuff like that. Uh, they have a bunch of names. Um, I'm going to show you the, guy, the one I use. Um, so essentially, if you're watching one of my videos, this will pop up, says like the video if you're enjoying, the little thumbs up. Um, that one's a pretty simple one that I just put together because um, I didn't want anything real fancy at the time. Still kind of don't kind of like it, but um, yeah, so that one's a little too simple and most people can do that, no problem. But I'll be showing you how to do this cool, uh, clean, more professional looking one, uh, which still isn't real difficult to do. Um, so first off, you want to be in Photoshop, obviously. Um, and I'm just going to bring this to the top of my screen as a reference. Um, but if you record in uh, 1080p or 720p, uh, or you don't know, you need to know. Because when you create your document, you want to make it the same height and width as your videos usually are. So in my case, 1280 by 720 If you rock 1080p, you'd be 1920 by 1080 um, 72 resolution, and you want to make your file. So obviously this one's a 720p file. Um, and then I just fill the background with a dark gray. You can hide the background, not even rock one. Uh, it doesn't matter, I just use a dark gray. Um, but let's get started. So first off, I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna go down here to the rectangle tool and create a small little rectangle. About that big, that, that'll work. And I'm just going to hide this properties bar and I'm going to right click rasterize layer. And I'm going to go, go command I to inverse the color to make it black. Um, you can make it whatever color you want right now, um, but I'm going to go through at the end and change the colors of everything. So on that layer, I'm going to go command J to duplicate it, then command I to make it white, then command T and I'm going to go to the very top square or point and drag that down to about like a quarter of the normal height and then drag it down. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and I'm going to, I'm, we still have it selected and uh, like transformed and we're going to click command, click the top right point, hold shift and move that point inwards. And then we're just going to extend this point a little further, drag it down a little bit and over a little bit, somewhere around there, that'll do. And let's zoom back out, uh, command zero to go uh, full screen. And let's command J that white rectangle again, hold shift, bring it up. Um, if you're in CC, it should make the points equal distance from the black bar. These two white rectangles, about the same distance away from the black bar is what I meant. Um, and then we're going to move this top one over off the screen, just like that. Now we're going to go to that original black rectangle, go to Command T, and again go to the top right corner, Command click Shift, but this time we're going out just a little bit. Then we're gonna do the same thing to the top left point, but just go a little less than we did on the right side. Click enter. Uh, now we're gonna command J, command I. So now it's white, then command U and bring down the lightness uh, towards the black to make it just a bit gray. And then we're gonna put that below the black layer. We're gonna bring it down so it's about midway in between this white rectangle and then we're gonna bring it all the way over the left to about there. And that's essentially our setup there. Now we wanna get a cool looking thumb to act as the, hey, like this. So the thumbs up, obviously social media for like the video or like this post or whatever. So you can just Google uh, like button or thumbs up or something like that. Um, this is one I have already in Photoshop, so I'm just gonna drag it on over. As you can see, it's a bit big, so I'm going to Command T, hold Shift and Option, or Alt, and kind of just size it up. I'm actually going to rotate it a little bit so his wrist is 
uh, almost vertical and about there there we go and I'm gonna go command U on that layer make it completely black and find a nice spot for it so think that'll do and now we want to merge all of the similar colors together so I'm gonna merge the blacks and I'm gonna merge the whites but that, not in a like segregation type racist way um, and now we're gonna do the colors um, we're gonna get to the text layer later so don't worry um, so for this first one we have the or the top layer we have the white bars so we're gonna double click on that go to gradient overlay we're gonna have the angle at zero uh, we're gonna have a black to white gradient um, it's actually on reverse right now but um, black to white make sure the blacks on the left and the whites to the right so maybe you do have to check this reverse it just depends um, how your gradient gradient is it really shouldn't but I think maybe I did something wrong in the process of selecting that gradient but nonetheless uh, we're gonna have the blend mode on normal 22% opacity and click OK that is exactly what we want now we're gonna go to the black layer double click on that color overlay and now you want to select the color you want to use so in my case I have this pink selected um, and this pink is hashtag so like the number uh, FF28E3 say that again FF28E3 if you want to follow along um, and click OK click OK then right click on that layer uh, and rasterize it now we're gonna double click on it again we're gonna go to the gradients again. And again, we want a black to white. This time we're gonna go 90. This time we're gonna go overlay. And let's put the opacity up at 100. See how that looks. That's looking all right. I can't really, can't really see it. I'm gonna decrease it just to about 80%. That'll do. And let's go ahead to inner glow and we're gonna have white and we're gonna have it set to overlay and about 61% um, choke of zero size you can mess around with the size I'm gonna go around five okay that works um, now let's go to the gray square down here um, so we're gonna double click on that and it's basically the uh, like similar settings to the one we just did um, so let's go to gradient actually first we need to do color so you want to go and it should automatically pick that pink you just selected but we want to go with a darker pink so we're just gonna go straight down from that to about there maybe a little higher so about there so maybe a little below mid-range click OK OK again right click rasterize layer style let's double click on that layer again gradient overlay and now we're gonna change the direction to go a bit sideways like that so now it kinda looks like there's a shadow there and we're just gonna decrease the opacity So I'm going to go with about 41%. That works. And that's about it for that. We're going to click OK and be done. Um, so one optional step you can do. Uh, I apologize if you just heard a phone. That was my phone going off. Um, you can go to the pink layer again and add a drop shadow. If there's not, if there doesn't appear to be a big enough drop shadow uh, with the gradient on the darker layer, uh, you can add one yourself. And basically the settings I use is like about 42 degrees. Uh, the blend mode set to multiply black 13 percent uh, distance 8 spread 10 size 8 so something like that will work just fine um, then click OK and now we're just gonna go ahead and add text so uh, I'm gonna go to the text tool I'm gonna make sure it's aligned left and I'm gonna click to the left of this box and just type I'm gonna put caps lock on 
like the video. And the font I'm using is Pantone, uh, what is it, black caps, right there. Um, I have that in my font pack, uh, which if I remember to, I will link in the description below. And let's double click on that and add the same drop shadow we used before. Click OK. And that's essentially it. So uh, if you notice, it's very similar to the top one I made. This one's a little lighter. I think that had something to do with the gradient, but I'm not sure what went wrong in the gradient here. Uh, once you finish, so I'm just going to delete this original and that. Uh, once you finish, you can put everything into a group. So I'm just going to select everything, Command G. And I'm going to go down here to uh, like all these uh, effects and stuff, or like adjustments. I guess they're called adjustment layers. Uh, but it's like the half filled in circle thing. And you want to go to Hue and Saturation. Um, and if you want, you can bump up the saturation. You can bump it down to make it duller, whatever. I'm going to keep it like plus five. But then you can go and change the color. To whatever you want so if you have a different color for different type of videos that'll work perfect and stuff like that once you're done though you want to unselect the gray layer at the bottom and then what you want to do is go to file um, and depending what Photoshop version you're in there might be a save for web just below save as but in CC you have to go to export save for web and then save it wherever you'd like and then when you're in your editing program, all you need to do is either make a transition that fades it in and then fades it out, or you can just simply use some keyframing or something to make it slide in, stay for a little bit, and then slide out. Um, hopefully, if you guys have any experience in your programs uh, that you use to edit, that won't be too difficult. Um, I know I'm pretty sure I know how to do it in all editing programs except Premiere because I've never used Premiere So if you need help drop a comment and I'll be sure to reply to all the necessary editing programs you guys need help with But there you guys go um, Thank you for watching. Hopefully this isn't too bad um, Not too confusing uh, I'll be sure to drop the PSD of this in the description at a hundred likes